Hey guys, welcome to Little House. Let's check out this uh, video called "This Is a uh, Part Two of the Congress of Vienna." Okay, <laughs> sorry about saying that, saying that way. Sorry, okay. But the Congress of Vienna Part Two, uh, we're gonna continue this like a sequel, and it's um, you know it's called Congress of Vienna Part Two, 1840 to 1815. Okay. And you know the last one. If you've seen the last reaction, that's that was like well, almost like two hours, one hour forty-five minutes something. I reacted. Okay, it was crazy, man. You know, it was so deep. The the whole thing. Um, somebody told me that that this this series is supposed to be the aftermath of what happened after Napoleonic Wars, and it was so deep. It was so deep. Holy shit! It was like showing us. Fucking Russia, Prussia, fucking all of it. It's just, uh, you know, even like France, um, British, everything. You know, it, they, 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 he just talked about everything, okay? Uh, and, and apparently there's a part two for that. I thought he covered the whole planet after that, but no. <laughs> there's a part two, and this thing is even bigger. It, the, the previous one was like 46 minutes. This one is fucking 51 minutes. And my reaction is definitely gonna go to two hours or even longer who knows you know it's crazy okay so we're gonna do this part two and you know this reaction is gonna be so long and that's why I'm not doing so many videos now but I, if you're seeing this you you will be seeing this by tomorrow okay and I don't know uh, by the end of this weekend or something I don't know you know because because there's so much there's so th this video is so long I'll lose all my energy okay it's it's a mess okay but let's get into this it's uh, I'm ready I, I just drank a, a bit of water um, you know and and now I'm you know I'm, I'm hydrated let's go okay let's go okay and uh, please make sure to subscribe these reactions I got a copyright strike on my backup channel if you haven't if you don't know already you know it's devastating but and, and, and still I'm still trying so hard on YouTube to get my content out like none of this shit matters I all the views that I get makes no sense because I never be able to earn anything so so then why like why am I working hard it, it's because people a lot of people are watching me that's the only reason you know and it might lead to some some good times in the future you know that's the only thing whatever it sucks I know but let's get into it. Three, and uh, but you're watching. Thank you for watching, though. You're the one that's making me keep going. Like otherwise, I would be like, "Fuck this," you know. <laughs> but let's go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. Let's just go. It's gonna be a long reaction. Grab your popcorn. Grab your uh, couch. Uh, grab everything. Grab everything, man. Grab some soft drinks. Don't drink any like fucking alcohol or some shit, or or else you can sleep and you will never know when to where I where did you stop and you have to go backwards you know don't do that so uh, let's go three to one let's go man let's go this is gonna be a crazy ass video let's do it three to one let's go right part two of Congress of Vienna let's go <laughs> All right. this is how the Congress of Vienna was organized huh there was an eight member central committee that would vote on the final treaty Okay. This group included the five great powers, plus three secondary powers, Spain, mm. Portugal, and Sweden, who oh. each had played an important role in the victory. You mean all of Europe? Like all of Europe? Holy shit. Victory over Napoleon. Mm. But the five great powers agreed to cut out the Central Committee by negotiating informally among themselves. Huh. If the great powers could hammer out a consensus, they could steamroll the Central Committee and the rest of the Congress. In mm. the end, this was where the real power lie. You know, you know what? I feel like uh, all this, you know, it's almost like you can never be a good leader. You know what I mean? Even if you're the greatest leader, the most peaceful leader, the most nicest leader, they would be like, okay, this motherfucker is taking too much of his time. And I, I'm about to get old and die. So I, I, I want him to go away. I want to destroy him and so that I can get some of the money and power. It's like nobody can fucking stay a leader. Even if they were the perfect motherfucker on the planet. Even then, they will never get, uh, you know, get to be the leader forever. They will always, oh, like, topple uh, a leader to, to, you know, replace him with some other dude. You know, I'm just saying, even like the, the people that always like bitch and moan about safety, peace, 
uh, nice things i want even though they love napoleon even they didn't want him like holy shit man i know that napoleon is like super um you know he loves war and shit and they didn't like that but even if he didn't love war even if he was super peaceful and everything was so great and for decades he was ruling even then they would want to replace him because they are just everybody is a fucking douchebag okay that's what i think i think everybody's a piece of shit all right that's what i think they, they just don't want to solve anything they just want to reap benefits from every single thing fuck them okay it just sucks then there were a number <laughs> of subcommittees at least 12 that would go off to the side and debate isolated issues among themselves hmm. when they reached a consensus they would bring their proposal to the central committee for approval most of and how many subdivisions and committees are gonna, they're gonna make? There's already too many. Holy shit. These subcommittees <laughs> were pretty boring. Which countries had shipping rights in which rivers? Stuff like that. <laughs> but the most <laughs> okay. important subcommittee was the German committee. This what committee the fuck? would be chaired by Metternich of Austria and mm. would have members from every German state in Central Europe, including okay. Prussia. Together, the German okay. states would go away and collectively decide what Central Europe would look like in a post-Holy Roman Empire world. Hmm. The negotiations that took place within the German committee were huh. perhaps the most consequential of the entire Congress. Consequential. Borders. <laughs> man, what? Oh my God, man. All these borders you would think that they're noble because um, different regions, different people, different races, they, they can live harmoniously and respect each other um, by not invading each other's space. But no, there's a catch to everything, okay? You, you have borders, they're gonna uh, use that to get money and shit like that. The military, the politicians, it's just fucked up, man. The world is so fucked up, okay? Everybody wants everything, it just sucks. <laughs> hey maybe that's the biggest problem that we face and we might we might we probably have to find a way to make that you know never happen again and you know satisfy everybody forever or something you know make it work for all of them uh, for everybody in the world and you know may maybe we can uh, you know fix the whole world by you know fixing that shit you know i don't know <laughs> entire congress the first roadblock was that the diplomats couldn't agree upon which map to use as a baseline for negotiations. As Whoa. I said before, none of these maps accurately reflected what was going on on the ground at the time. There huh. were armies from every great power scattered all over Europe. Huh. The default map that Britain, Austria, and Russia wanted to use was the mm. 1792 map with some minor modifications. In huh. other words, they wanted the default map to be France as it existed before any of its revolution. They probably use all kinds of maps to assert their own agenda. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, dude, you're only picking this map because you want things to be this way. You so <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Missionary wars of conquest. Hmm. France and Prussia favored using 1806 as a starting point. This oh. was when Prussia was at its beefiest. So obviously, oh. the land-hungry Prussians would push for this date. <laughs> Talleyrand Shit. backing... Hey, it's free real estate, you know what I mean? <laughs> Prussia's 1806 proposal was a shrewd move because mm. not only would it result in an extra beefy France, but mm. more importantly, it allowed Talleyrand to open the Congress by mm. throwing a wedge into the anti-French alliance. There was always the danger. So now this will uh, enable everybody to fight each other. Holy shit. <laughs> of the four great powers ganging up on a defeated France and mm. taking from them whatever they wanted. Hardenberg of Prussia even spoke of partitioning France. Huh. But with Talleyrand at the table, that wasn't happening. Mm. By pulling Prussia away from the other great powers, Talleyrand was signaling to everybody that France was capable mm. of making trouble. And oh. if the other great powers wanted to reach a consensus, they would actually have to negotiate with France. Mm. Okay, cool. Metternich and Castlereagh eventually talked Hardenberg down from his 1806 position. It's possible that they made certain informal promises regarding mm. Prussian territorial expansion, but those details okay. are lost to us. Okay. Poland and Saxony. Right, let's go. 
Huh. What map is this? <laughs> Just so say it. <laughs> it was decided that they would start with the old 1792 borders. Oh, okay. But these brought with them a huge problem. Hmm. Poland. A okay. beefy Poland had existed in 1792. And huh. if it were to be restored, it would come at the expense of Russia and Prussia. Prussia huh. was land hungry and would not willingly hmm. let go of any of its Polish provinces without being compensated somewhere else. Oh. Russia didn't want Poland to exist at all since it was served. I mean, that's a massive space that's lost. You know, the, they, they will not like that. <laughs> There's nothing more than a buffer between it and Central Europe. Hmm. Metternich loved the idea of restoring Poland. Not huh. only would it keep Russia out of Central Europe, but it would huh. push Russia back from the Austrian border. Metternich huh. was even willing to give up Austria's Polish-speaking provinces to make this happen. Okay. Castlereagh wow. and Metternich pulled Hardenberg aside and came to a preliminary agreement over hmm. Poland. Okay. Prussia would give up its Polish-speaking provinces, but Castlereagh Whoa. and Metternich promised to compensate for this with German-speaking oh. provinces in Central Europe. Shit. The three of them came to a handshake agreement that Prussia would receive Saxony, along with several German cities to the west. Hmm. Under this framework, Prussia's population would increase by 6%, and Poland would remain independent. All oh, okay. three were wow. happy with this. Okay. When Tsar okay. Alexander of Russia caught wind of this secret agreement, he threw oh. a pretty public tantrum. Oh. He announced <laughs> that he intended to keep 100% of Poland, including <laughs> the Polish-speaking provinces currently held by Austria and Prussia. Huh. These demands were extreme, extreme. and it was difficult to imagine <laughs> Austria and Prussia simply handing their territory over to Russia for nothing. Okay. Talleyrand was also <laughs> unhappy with the secret Poland agreement and went mm. to see Tsar Alexander privately. Okay. Talleyrand specifically wanted to preserve a strong and independent Saxony, since France and Saxony had traditionally been strong allies. All Talleyrand right. made his pitch to the Russian Emperor. Hmm. Alexander replied, I would rather have war than give up what I occupy. Oh, shit! <laughs> Talleyrand was stunned when he heard this and asked for- And now there's gonna be a massive war! Holy shit, is this gonna be the next French Revolution? There's so much, um, you know, disagreement, uh, tantrums and all that happening based on the maps that we got and uh, who, who controls what part of land. It's just a mess. For clarification, hmm. yes, I would rather have war, Alexander said. Oh, Talleyrand God. began trying to talk the emperor down into a compromise, but before he could- I mean, everybody's already looking at Alexander like, this dude is the biggest, dumbest motherfucker, the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. And he probably knows that that's what everybody thinks of him. But now he's like, we want a war. And it's like, I know what you think about me, but I want a war. This is not good for me or something. It's just, it's just a mess, okay? You make any progress <laughs> alexander stood up and declared it's time for the theater i have to go huh. he then gave talleyrand an affectionate hug and ran off <laughs> after casually okay. threatening a world war hmm. the russian emperor stayed out partying until four in the morning <laughs> talleyrand was appropriately alarmed at this hmm. behavior and informed the other great powers of Whoa. russia's intransigence and now there's gonna be an even bigger war. I don't know. It's uh, Hardenberg it's crazy. began to fear that Prussia may be on the losing end of a conflict over huh. Poland. So he began oh, okay. to move soldiers around to fortify the parts of Poland that they currently occupied. Hmm. Okay. As if that isn't bad enough, Metternich then found out that his hmm. monarch was upset with him. Oh. The Austrian Emperor Francis summoned Metternich mm. and chastised him for using oh. the Kingdom of Saxony as a bargaining chip. Yeah. Austria was trying to position okay. itself internationally as the defender of the rule of law and the defender okay. of the rights of smaller Central European states. They mm. couldn't credibly do this if they sold their neighbors up the river at first opportunity. You are destroying our reputation! What do you think you're doing? You know, that's what he probably said. <laughs> Emperor Francis told Metternich that the Kingdom of Saxony must survive the negotiations, mm. and it must survive at at least half of its current size. Okay. <laughs> this made Dang. Metternich's task infinitely How more the complex. Fu 
pressure. <laughs> it's like, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? You know, it just went. Must be convinced <laughs> to take less of Saxony than they had been promised in their handshake deal. Hmm. This meant that they would want to hold on to their Polish-speaking provinces okay. in order to make that work. Hey, how about let the Polish have their own, you know, just don't try to grab their land, just leave them. And I hope the Polish, like, fight back and, you know, keep their land to themselves. I don't know. Because this, this shit will, uh, you know, make, you know, another war happen. Like, seriously. Metternich would need to strike a deal with Tsar Alexander. Oh, okay. Shit, this is insane. <laughs> hey, what is this part of the land in the here? I don't know what this is. Can somebody tell me in the comments? What is this? Is that like a shipping dock or something? But that shit is so big. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe that's, um, you know, a, a place where nobody can go or so. I don't know. It's a mess. All right. <laughs> I, hope no I hope nothing like a big war happens. I hope... None of that happens, like seriously. Metternich went to meet with Alexander, mm. and things got heated. Mm. Metternich did not find the Russian emperor particularly intimidating, and spoke to him in the manner that he would speak to any other diplomat. Mm. Alexander wasn't really used to that, and after two long hours of mm. back and forth, he jumped to his feet, marched over to Metternich, and huh. challenged him to a duel. A duel. This kind of thing was above Metternich's pay grade and required oh. the personal intervention of the Austrian emperor. Hmm. Francis of Austria soothed Alexander's ego by saying <laughs> that of course he would win a duel against Metternich, but oh. murdering the Austrian foreign minister might cause an international incident. Oh. <laughs> Recall Metternich's first impression. Like how, how, how muscular he is. Is he gonna literally... Uh, deal can he can he even survive the duel i don't know of alexander <laughs> the biggest baby on earth oh shit was i know I, in the previous video i was like laughing holy shit they call him the biggest baby on earth oh my god <laughs> he, he would have like two different types of thinking and it would contradict himself and he would be like almost looking like a clown in front of everybody <laughs> just ridiculous and everybody was like you know, that, that's why they said the biggest baby on earth, like seriously. After this incident, Alexander would privately describe Metternich as, quote, a permanent obstacle and, quote, a sworn <laughs> enemy. Oh, man. The feeling was mutual. Come on, Alexander, think before you speak, man. I know, uh, you know, it, you're like a baby or whatever, you, but still, like, come on, man. Think before you, at least, like, when you're speaking, think. Like, wow. <laughs> Russia was apparently a dead end, so Metternich went to Prussia next. Huh. Metternich explained to Hardenberg that he could now only give Prussia half of Saxony. Okay. This was not what they had agreed to, and Hardenberg mm. was understandably upset. The two oh, okay. diplomats parted ways with sore feelings and oh, no man. Agreement. The entire oh, deal man. over Poland seemed to be dead. Well, oh, dying. shit. And the prospect of war with Russia was becoming a growing concern. Oh, God. In yeah. The Russians never uh, back down. They never take a step back. They always fight back. They, they, they will fucking kill the whole world and assert their dominance. That's the type of people. I, I mean, from what I'm seeing in Napoleon, Napoleonic Wars and Napoleon in it Italy and all of that, Napole the Marshall series and everything... That's what I've seen, okay? The Russians never stop at anything, okay? Uh, even if they're like, they didn't even engage in war and they were, uh, you know, you know, fucking pushed into it, even then they don't stop, okay? They're crazy. <laughs> Dang. Operation. Metternich brought Britain and France into the negotiations. He hmm. thought that if three great powers could bring a compromise to the other two, they might be pressured into accepting it. Okay. All right. Castlereagh went mm. to see Alexander. He okay. explained to the Russian Tsar that Britain would not accept a Poland under Russian domination. Huh. The British public demanded an independent Poland. Huh. Alexander finally let his guard down, or at least pretended to, and mm. confessed to Castlereagh that the war with Napoleon had left him in a precarious situation back in Russia. The huh. Russians had sacrificed everything to defeat Napoleon, and the Russian aristocracy felt that they oh, deserved man. Poland as a reward. 
Oh. Alexander doesn't come right out and say this, but he hints that he had promised them exactly that before he left. The implication was that there may be a- Now these fucking promises are gonna lead to a new war. Um, come on, man. Who? If he went back empty-handed. Huh. Castle Ray explained to Alexander that if he took Poland without the consent of the other great powers, it hmm. would not end well for him. Prussia and Austria would become permanent enemies of Russia. Hey, how about you take half of Poland and give half of it to, uh, you know, the, the other people? Like, come on, man. Like, we, we can agree um, to, uh, you know, share. Like, come on, dude. And natural allies to the occupied Polish population. Hmm. One way or another, Poland huh. would be free. Okay. It would be free? Uh, free from both sides, I hope. And, and, and a standalone one. Because this shit, it's gonna be like uh, grabbing the hardest bitch by both the parties, grabbing by the hand. Hey, she's mine, she's mine, you know? <laughs> what the f <laughs> It would be so ridiculous. It seemed that negotiations were hmm. approaching an impasse. Okay. And then disaster struck. News got out that the Prussian king had publicly signed off on the Russian annexation of Poland. Huh. Tsar Alexander had been personally negotiating with him in secret. Hmm. Hardenberg was inconsolable. His own king had just stabbed him in the back. It oh. was humiliating. What oh. made matters worse was that the Prussian king was too stupid to realize he wasn't helping. Oh, shit. This turn of events lit a fire under the members of the Congress. Oh, fuck. Castle Ray grabbed Hardenberg and Whoa. said that if Hardenberg could get the Prussian king to walk back those Poland comments, oh. then Britain would be prepared to back Prussia's demand to annex 100% of Saxony. Hardenberg <laughs> agreed and marched off to oh, okay. wrestle back control of his monarch. Dang. Metternich stayed strategically <laughs> silent during this. He was like, yeah, come on, listen to me, you know? It's like... He had secretly <laughs> written to Castlereagh and mm. promised Austrian support in this scheme. Even hey, you know what? This part two of this video, this video is actually, I could understand it. And I, I was like, uh, I'm like so deep into it uh, because the previous, the first part was like so deep. Some of the things I couldn't even understand, bro. And, and it's like, I was like still thinking about some things as, but this guy was getting into new stuff as the video was going and I just couldn't think about it. And it was like, holy shit, let's just keep going because this reaction is gonna get like blow up into two hours or something, you know? It was like so deep. The video was so deep and complicated, but this part two is kind of understandable. It's almost like it's um, something I, uh, it's almost like I relate to it. It's fucking cool. This video is actually cool. Um, you know, it's much more entertaining to watch this than the first one. The first one is very complicated. Uh, not like it's bad video or anything. It's way too deep and so, so many things were happening, you know? But in this one, it, it's more entertaining and it's more like a bunch of leaders talking to each other. Uh, whether to split Pol uh, Poland apart, I hope they split a split it apart or something, I don't know. Uh, probably won't because it's all Poland. And why would they split apart? I don't know. But, you know, they're all trying to grab it. You know, it's just ridiculous, okay? But, um, you know, that, that this video is fucking interesting, okay? Let's go. And, and the video seems to, like, end really fast. I'm already, like, 12 minutes into it. Holy shit. <laughs> Though Dang. it was in direct violation of his emperor's instructions to huh. preserve at least half of Saxony. Huh. But that was a problem for another day. Okay. Cool. And just like that, because mm. of Russian overreach, Britain, France, Prussia, and Austria were huh. all on the same page when it okay. came to Poland. It was okay, four cool. against one. Huh. With newfound urgency, the four powers came together and drafted three possible options to resolve the Poland crisis. Poland crisis. Everybody should agree, like, Alexander is the outcast. That's not that good. And he, he wants, like, war. Like, seriously, he wants to engage in war. Um, I hope none of that happens. Like, seriously. He, he literally is acting like a baby right now. What the fuck, man? Option number one <laughs> called for an enlarged Poland, which would include the Polish-speaking provinces from oh. Russia, Austria, and Prussia. Hmm. Option okay. number two called for a reduced Poland, where Russia, Austria, and Prussia each hmm. held on to their Polish-speaking provinces. 
Hmm. Option number okay. three called for a full partition where Russia, Austria, and Prussia would come in and divide Poland three ways. Under this plan, wow. the people of Poland would have certain political protections across all three countries. Oh shit! You might notice that there was no option in which Russia got to keep all of Poland. Okay. That was on purpose. Okay. Talleyrand cool. <laughs> was selected to go and present these options to the Russian Tsar. He hmm. explained to Alexander that France's official position was hmm. that there should be an independent Poland. He said, that "Yeah, I, I agree that leave Poland alone, let them have their own Poland." And I think they left Poland alone because we got Poland separately now, or is it part of some like Russia or something? I don't know. Russia acted on its own and annexed hmm. Poland. Prussia and Austria would have no choice but to seriously consider a potential war with Russia. Oh shit, no, scenario, please! Both would seek to strengthen themselves through territorial expansion. Huh. If three of the great powers were going around Europe gobbling up territory, France mm. and Britain would have no choice but to intervene. Talleyrand oh. was very... I, I believe this is the stage where we're not engaging in war anymore. We're, we're uh, mutually having negotiations, conversations, um, instead of bloodbath, you know? People start to... Um, this, is, this is the point where people started to, like, conversate, you know? And, and have uh, mutual decisions, instead of blindly engaging in war. Uh, I, I believe it all ended with Napoleon. Like uh, Napoleon, till till Napoleon came and till Napoleon uh, was defeated, it was all time. It's like war every time, every time. Oh, you don't like this? We're gonna fight you. Okay, it's like that, you know. But now it's like you don't like this? Tell me why. We we would like to conversate. Let's let's come to a conclusion. You know, it's like that. And that's that's I guess that's bet better. You know, it's better. It's better compared to uh, Napoleon stuff where, you know, you're always engaged in war, trying to invade big lands. You know, it makes no sense. And, you know, Napoleon, I guess he kind of proved that it would never work like that, you know, with that, that 500,000 troops thing, you know, which is so great, you know. Um, even though it's, it, it's bad for Napoleon and... <laughs> <laughs> well, his his technique was not good and stuff, you know. But but you know he was legend for his time, you know. After his time is done, it's a new age and new ways of you know maintaining leadership. It's much better that way, you know. But but then there's also always this fear of another war, you know. And it can shit can hit the fan real hard, man. Shit can go so bad, you know. It's crazy. We haven't had World War Three yet, but it, it it might happen. You know, it might happen any time, and we don't know. Any any like some some cowardly bitch might start off with, out of nowhere, and then it could cause a war. You know, it just I'm just saying, like holy shit. Clear with Alexander. Hmm. If he took Poland by force, the great hmm. powers would go to war. Oh yeah. Alexander was growing frustrated with this constant. Dip I believe independent Poland is much better. Leave Poland alone. Stop fighting for it. Like, I don't think it, it's going to solve. And if you're going to solve, one have to compromise. One of them has to compromise. Like, seriously. Diplomatic meddling. <clears throat> and finally snapped. I have 200,000 men in the Duchy of Warsaw, a.k.a. Poland. And I would like to see <laughs> anyone try to drive me out of it. I have given Prussia Saxony, and Austria consents to it. Huh. Alexander had spies everywhere, and oh. apparently he knew that Saxony was secretly being used as a bargaining chip. Okay. Talleyrand Shit. feigned innocence and asked an innocent question. Hmm. How could Prussia annex Saxony when they had no claim to the Saxon throne? Alexander huh. responded, If the king of Saxony will not abdicate, he will be packed off to Russia. He will die there. Oh. This Whoa. was an open threat oh, of violence shit. against another monarch, <laughs> and huh. it was not the answer that Talleyrand was expecting. Hmm. After a pause, he responded with caution. The Congress was oh, not- Oh man, this is, this is literally like a, a conversation between babies. Like they want violence and war so hard. And they're pissed off and they, they'll just, 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 just say like, I will kill him. You know, it, it's so ridiculous. But I guess it's the signs of those times. You could, you could so easily get into violence because we just got out of war by Napoleonic wars and everything. And, but the next war hasn't started yet. And it was so, 
like it's like the, the tip of the point the war the violence was at the you know at the slip of a tongue like anybody could say it and a war could start you know it was so tense intense tension filled ridiculous times okay what can we do that's the, and now it's much better but it feels like the western politics are so fucked up now it feels like there could be a war you know because these motherfuckers are so stupid they will fucking start a war just for their they're so selfish they they lack all the humanity in the world all their uh, talking points are just talking points they don't even really believe that shit it's just ridiculous you know assembled to hmm. witness a violent assault of this kind hmm. at this Alexander truly lost his temper. Oh my Do god. Do you really think I give much weight to all your parchments and treaties? The king of Prussia oh. will be the king of Prussia and Saxony, just mm. as I will be the emperor of Russia and the king of Poland. With that, wow. he stormed out of the room, leaving Talleyrand alone. My god! Alexander is fucked up, man. I never heard of such a leader that is so fucking literally 10 times worse than a baby. Holy shit. He's literally like a baby man what the fuck he keeps yelling and and just has no understanding of things holy shit man we we might have to like um replace him with the with another dude because that shit is that dude is crazy dude he's crazy with his thoughts hmm. Hmm. okay let's go when Metternich learned of Alexander's outburst, he finally yeah. lost his... And why is Talleyrand telling everybody of what Alexander said? It's much better to keep that shit a secret because that motherfucker, if, if you tell everybody about all this, they might all get into a war. And, and you know, and but, but then again, if you don't tell anybody, then they might all be like, why didn't you tell us? And it, it, it's going to be, it's going to burst out or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's all a mess. Patience. He decided to meet once more with the Russian Tsar, this time with a different negotiating tactic. Negotiating tactic. He told Alexander that Austria was considering unilaterally selecting a Polish king to rule over an independent Poland. Hmm. This was an unspoken threat. Metternich huh. was telling Alexander that all he had to do was snap his fingers and Poland huh. would rise up against Russian occupation. Okay. Alexander responded by issuing an unspoken threat of his own. Huh. He invited Metternich to come to Poland and inspect the Russian soldiers stationed there. Huh. All 200,000 of them. <laughs> Metternich then dropped the subtlety. He hmm. flatly told Alexander that if he took Poland, huh. the entire Congress of Vienna would be against him. Whoa. After this, Tempers flared, Whoa, were raised, shit. and things ah! got personal. Whoa, they probably threw a bunch of utensils, all all the fucking uh, cauldrons, everything on their face, kitchen sink on the face, each other. It's like, holy shit, man. That now the, the, the both idiots are fighting. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm belittling them, um, bullying them, calling them uh, babies and whatnot. But, you know, back then, shit was so serious. These are adults f fighting because shit was always going to get serious, you know, especially after the Napoleonic Wars. Things would have gotten so even worse if, if, you know, they didn't maintain the, you know, the respect and, you know, you know, the niceties, the good exchange and whatnot. If they didn't maintain that, shit would have gotten even worse and probably will get worse in this video. Who knows? There might be another war happening. And I don't know much about the history, so, you know, so it, it probably could happen. That's what I'm thinking. Let's go. <laughs> From this moment on, Metternich would refuse to be in the same room with the Russian Tsar unless mm. others were present, which huh. frankly is exactly the kind of grudge that I respect. Oh... Hey, at least that's a good decision because if you if you're gonna stay um, anywhere close to Alexander alone, he might even start start beating the shit out of you, or you start beating the shit out of him. It, it would be a chaos. So it's much better to have a group conversation that results in an agreeable um, conclusion. You know, dang. <laughs> and then a very troubling thing happened. Hmm. Without notice, the Russian soldiers in Saxony began to pull back and leave. Shortly huh. after this, the Prussian soldiers occupying parts of Poland did the same. Huh. All of a sudden, there was a lot of military movement, and nobody huh. knew why. 
Within a matter of weeks, a lot more Prussian soldiers entered Saxony, and a lot oh. more Russian soldiers entered Poland. It became mm. clear that there was some kind of handoff happening, a secret agreement between Russia and Prussia. Huh. Both were openly fortifying their positions and preparing for war. Whoa. Bad, bad, bad. So this shit is almost like uh, because they didn't want to say out, we're going to have a war. You know, they didn't, they didn't want to say out loud, so they're secretly just preparing. Uh, it's almost like uh, the world itself is deciding <laughs> uh, without taking a decision on what to do. You know, it's holy shit. This is so intense. This, this is scary. Oh, my God. Shit. Castle Ray wrote a summary of these events to Prime Minister Liverpool back in Britain. Quote, hmm. Unless the Emperor of Russia can be brought to a more moderate and sound course of public conduct, huh. the peace which we have so dearly purchased will be but of a short duration. You yeah. must make up your mind to watch him and resist him if necessary. As another yeah, all this negotiation, negotiation, all this, um, per, you know, fucking, um, you know, back and forth with the uh, capturing of the lands, invasions, and all of this needs to be put to rest. Um, you know, this is like I, I think this is probably like one of the last conversations and you know decision makings and uh, you know, you know agree to disagreeing and all of that based on land you know because um people can't they they don't want to have any more wars after napoleonic wars man this is the final you know whatever place you got whatever land you got you better be okay with it because we don't want you don't want another war either so it's like whoa let's just stop okay let's not fucking quarrel about land anymore that's that's where we're heading bonaparte shit <laughs> Back in Britain, the domestic political situation was mm. approaching a boiling point. The narrow mm. conservative Whig majority in the House of huh. Commons was in jeopardy. Oh. The liberal Whig opposition had weaponized the Saxony and Poland crisis and were using oh. it as a rallying cry against authoritarianism everywhere. The oh. liberals had the public on their side, mm. and now they were calling for an independent Saxony and an independent Poland with no concessions to the other powers whatsoever. Huh. Liverpool was in a... Hey, back then, you know, uh, you know, independent uh, and independence and all of that was really valued, and that's good, you know? Back then, I think liberals were really... Um, you know, they, they had good values and uh, good understanding, and they were not, like, you know, super... Uh, you know, had like super fucking crazy ideas or anything. That was good. But now liberals are kind of, I don't know. I guess they don't understand. I guess they don't understand what they're fighting for. It's like, it's weird, man. I hope they get back on track because this, this is what liberals should be like, uh, you know, trying to get independence of everything, you know, instead now we got it's crazy. I, I, I'm not. I'm not that much into like Western politics, so I don't know much about it. But it's like both sides are fighting this two-party system, man. It's fucked up. Okay, it's so fucked up. And 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 the uh, the right side people are trying to defend. It's like it's all weird. It's all weird. We don't know who's at fault here. Everybody's fighting. It's we don't know what is right or wrong because everybody wants to be confused and reap the benefits off of each other or some shit. It's, it's like a business. It's weird. It's everybody's fucked up piece of shit. Okay, it's a mess. Um, I hope things go back to how how they used to be. Like you know, back back here. You know, it, th this is much better than uh, all the fucking bullshit that we're we're having now. You know, a precarious Fuck. situation and could not appear to be throwing the people of Poland to the Russian wolves or hmm. bears or whatever. Huh. The liberals wanted to paint Liverpool as sympathetic to the Russian tyrant, and so oh. Liverpool. And uh, it's almost like liberals, liberals, liberals are always like, um, you know, obsessing over tyrant behavior. It's like I get it. Okay, it's not something to be, uh, you know, 
you don't have to be obsessed over it okay yes there are things uh, things are really bad right now we will uh, we will come to an understanding we will fix it stop obsessing stop raging against and all of that shit you know this will only make things even worse you know and that's what's that's what i see from liberals now you know they're always obsessed about holy shit authoritarianism uh nazism and all that it's just so much obsession with that that will destroy you you will implode you know, that will happen if you keep obsessing over it. You know, that's something that they need to... I think they even know this, but then they're like... I don't know, it's almost like... I don't know, it's weird, man. It's almost like they like doing that. It's it's weird. Needed you know? to prove them wrong. He wrote to Castlereagh, instructing him to back away from any deal that would partition Saxony or Poland. The huh. official British position would now call for full independence for both countries. Okay. Cool. You would think that such an abrupt shift in priorities would blow up the negotiations, but it really huh. didn't. After being stabbed in the back by Russia and Prussia, Metternich felt no obligation to bend over backwards for them anymore. The Austrian Emperor had always wanted an independent Saxony, and huh. Metternich had always wanted an independent Poland, so he hmm. joined the British in calling for both. Okay. Talleyrand had always favored full independence for both countries. And hey, hey, independence and, you know, privacy is very good. It's it, Freedom is as good as it can get, but not extreme freedom. In my opinion, extreme freedom can lead to some really bad culture, you know? That's that's what I think. But, but freedom, uh, as far as human rights go, great, cool, okay? Um, Fantastic, and that's what I uh, that's what I like. I, I'm with liberals, and that's good, you know. Quickly followed Metternich's lead. Hmm. This audacious show of force from Russia and Prussia spooked every small and medium-sized state in Central oh, Europe. Shit. If Saxony could get. Yeah, the Central Europe is almost like getting sandwiched between all of these fucked up places. <laughs> Steamrolled like this, nobody was safe. Virtually every Central European state. Soon they're going to fight for Central Europe and their independence. And they're going to want more land or something. It's going to be a mess, okay? And and also, like, all this shit, little, little, you know, spaces captured by others makes no sense. They probably will want every all of this. And they will probably fight for it. And then it's going to be another Poland situation. Holy shit. <laughs> found their courage and backed Castlereagh and Metternich's call for an independent Saxony and an independent Poland. Hmm. Austria had long sought to position itself as the defender of precedent and tradition and the rule of law, and now that strategy was paying off. Hmm. Metternich okay. suddenly found himself at the center of attention, the most popular guy in Vienna, the oh. hub to which every Central European state wanted to attach itself. Hmm. Okay. When the dust settled, it became clear that Russia and Prussia's power grab had been a massive blunder. Oh. Tsar Alexander must have realized that he had backed himself into a corner because oh. he began sending signals to Austria that he might be satisfied with less than 100% of Poland. This huh. was exactly the sort of opening that everyone was waiting for. Oh. Attention then turned to Prussia. There were reports that Prussia was building fortifications inside of occupied Saxony, which drew okay. broad international condemnation. It soon oh. became conspicuous that Tsar Alexander was remaining silent. Prussia wow. was being left hanging out to dry. Oh. A desperate Hardenberg visited hmm. Talleyrand and tried to get him to break away from the other powers by making wild promises. At one point, Hardenberg offered France the Netherlands, which of course huh. was a red line for Britain, and not something that Hardenberg was in a position to give away. Hmm. Talleyrand wisely turned him down. Hardenberg wow. was out of options. He backed down from his maximalist position and began oh. telling people that he would accept no less than half of Saxony. Oh, Metternich shit. jumped at this. An independent Saxony at half of its current size would satisfy both the Austrian Emperor and all of those smaller Central European states. Okay, cool. After some <laughs> back and forth over specifics, an agreement huh. was reached. Prussia would receive half of Saxony, along with some German-speaking territory along the Rhine. 
a reduced huh. Saxony would remain fully independent, and war would be averted. Whoa. Shit. Cool. But then there was still the <laughs> issue with Poland. Alexander reopened negotiations by offering to let Austria and Prussia keep their Polish-speaking provinces. A real change wow. of tune from last time. Castlereagh then called for the creation of a strong Polish constitution built upon liberal democratic values. Tsar oh. Alexander immediately agreed and publicly thanked Castlereagh for his advocacy on behalf of the people of Poland. <laughs> if you find Alexander's change in demeanor a little mm. shocking, you aren't alone. Whoa. It's clear that there were some back-channel talks <laughs> going on during the Saxony crisis, okay. and it seems that concessions were made in order to get Alexander to back off and throw Prussia under the bus. Hmm. What was happening now over Poland seemed well choreographed, as if it had all been drawn up in some back room somewhere. Hmm. The great cool. powers quickly... It's all a fucking crazy crazy mess everybody's like confused as fuck it's ridiculous reached an agreement over poland huh. and it looked like this okay. austria and prussia would be allowed the poland settlement let's see what the fuck they settled on and will they keep their promise let's see allowed <laughs> to keep their polish speaking provinces the hmm. rest would become the kingdom of poland okay the good new kingdom would have a strong liberal democratic constitution with an independent hmm. legislature independent courts and an independent army Okay, the king cool. Of Poland would be the the liberals got all the independence they wanted, <laughs> and now uh, it's it's all cool, okay. And but the Austrians and Prussians also got a little bit. Fine, it, they they split apart, uh, made the Poland independent. It's cool. I like this. Be a quasi ceremonial role, tightly constrained by the Polish constitution. Hmm. Under this deal, it was decided that Tsar Alexander of Russia would hmm. separately and simultaneously become the king of Poland. Okay. On paper, this satisfied the British and Austrian demands for an independent Poland, since the new kingdom retained the right to make its own laws and field its own military. It also mm. satisfied Alexander's demand to take Poland as a prize for defeating Napoleon. Oh! <laughs> but obviously, Poland could not be truly independent under this arrangement. With oh. the Russian emperor. As yeah, the... when everybody's looking uh, over you, uh, when everybody's like, it's almost like you're controlled by them. You, you're never say, you're never really independent. Independence is just a, uh, you know, a title given to you. That's it. it it's, it's like a position, like, like a, a, a job given to you by a, a government building or whatever, and you're part of it. That's it. <laughs> that, there's, there, independence mean, means nothing. You have to fight for independence. You have to, you have to be a, you have to make everybody fuck off, fuck off, and and make your own house and be happy. You know, you have to fight. You have to engage in war for independence, or else all the independence that you're getting from other countries is only so that they can control control you. It's not really independence. You know what I mean? Fuck. As their king, it became impossible for Poland to resist creeping Russian influence. <laughs> For the rest of Alexander's reign, he would chip away at Poland's independent political institutions and yeah. slowly work towards swallowing Poland into the Russian Empire. By the huh. time his successor came to the throne, the new Russian emperor declared that he no longer felt bound by the Polish constitution. Huh. And then that was that. Oh! So he literally ate Poland. What the fuck? It's undeniable <laughs> that Castlereagh and Metternich sacrificed Poland for an independent Saxony. Wow. Perhaps they saw the writing on the wall. The truth was that if Russia took Poland by force, hmm. Austria and Britain really weren't in a position to take it back. Huh. Perhaps they decided that if they couldn't stop Russia from taking Poland, they could turn <laughs> the whole thing into a poison pill. As oh. an island of liberalism within the Russian Empire, mm. Poland would confound and distract Tsar Alexander for the rest of his reign. Huh. Okay. The Poland and Saxony crisis brought the great powers back to the brink of war. But now okay. that there was a deal in place, messy as it was, there was finally room to breathe. One of the conditions wow. <laughs> attached to the Poland deal was that Tsar Alexander, having received his great prize, was hmm. to get out of the way and let everybody else negotiate what they came to negotiate. Shit. <laughs> there were still several outstanding questions that hmm. needed to be settled. 
but none more pressing than the fate of the German-speaking states in Central Europe. Okay, Germany! Okay, the Poland shit is probably settled at this point, but we're gone to Germany. Let's see what the fuck's happening in Germany. I hope there's no Hitler coming already. Like, I don't know. <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> All right, cool. Chair of the German committee. And now that the crisis over Poland was resolved, he was finally okay. able to get some real work done. Hmm. Recall that the Congress of Vienna had agreed to use the 1792 borders as okay. a starting point for negotiation. I can't believe they still agreed to that borders. <laughs> I, there's like multiple maps, and they, I would, I would like, I was like thinking they were gonna fight over this, like they could, they're gonna have a big ass war or something because they couldn't under, they couldn't get to like a conclusion on what to, which map to use, you know. So it was like, what the, <laughs> it was gonna be a big war, but no, they actually. For they managed to agree to at least one type of border, which is cool. Because holy shit! <laughs> well, Dang. in 1792, the Holy Roman Empire existed. Hmm. Metternich had no interest in turning back the clock. The Holy Roman Empire had proved itself to be a totally inept institution when faced with a real threat. Oh. Yeah, the because they they don't want they don't like war, and they managed other uh, places, so it's like. It's like they, they don't really have any, uh, you know, experience handling a war, uh, dealing with a war and, and how to fight in it. And they probably don't. And yeah, they probably became useless in, in terms of war. And at some point they would have had to deal with war, you know. So this whole not engaging in war would have been a bad choice in, in at least like at least like some of their, you know, you know something you know it, at least like uh, you know they they couldn't because they don't know how war would have uh, you know how how to deal with war you know and and it just it's just crazy man um but i hope they didn't lose anything by the end you know the german committee had the task of figuring out what central europe would look like in a post holy roman empire world hmm. as far as metternich could see there were four possible paths forward hmm. okay option number 1 Complete the future of Central Europe options. Let's see. Independence for everybody. Good. Option number two: a German Empire united under one government. Uh, Option no. number three: a loose <laughs> no. confederation. Of hey, you know what? If they agreed to an entire German Empire, maybe Hitler wouldn't have risen through ranks. Who knows? You know, just saying. Like, um, he would have gotten most of it or something. He would have been satisfied with. Because he would have gotten everything, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but, but, but this probably is like so far in the history. Um, and, and uh, you know, Hitler wasn't even a thing then. So whatever. Let's go. Of German states. Okay, let me see. All right, cool. Let's go. Option number four. Austria and Prussia expand hmm. and conquer their smaller neighbors. Hmm. All four of these options presented problems. Okay. If they decided to go with option number two, a united German Empire, Metternich would obviously insist upon a Habsburg Emperor. But huh. given recent experience over Saxony, Metternich did not believe that the Prussians would submit to the Austrians like that. Hmm. In addition to that, Metternich was getting signals from Castlereagh that the British would not sign off on the creation of a German Empire. Huh. So option number two seemed a dead end. Oh. Option number four, <laughs> Austria and Prussia conquering their neighbors didn't seem great either. Such aggressive behavior would frighten all the other great powers. And if okay. any of them tried to protect one of the smaller German states, huh. they would all be at war again. Oh. That left option number one or option number three. Either Man. complete independence or oh. a loose confederation. Huh. Of the two. I would say lose confederation because that would give much more freedom and what what not you know complete independence will, will only uh, halt things and and you know we, we're gonna engage in war sometime in the future or something like that because you know it's like two different countries at that point dude it's it's all com you're completely independent uh, a place of your own and you will engage in war sometime in the future you it's inevitable okay so loose confederation in my opinion is like you know a soft 
a soft position, a soft position, and nobody can do anything about it. It's a loose confederation. End of story. Okay, and you know, I hope not. No war. You know, I hope not. None of nothing like a war happens in the future, though. Um, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just get into it. Metternich's preference was for mm. a loose confederation. He mm. thought that complete independence would leave Central Europe weak and unable mm. to defend itself. It would only be yeah. a matter of time until some outside power went to war. That's what I said. Some bullshit is going to come in and then you're going to have a war again. You know, a loose confederation at least would guarantee your position. You know, if you're independent, then everybody's eyeing on you, like, trying to get you. You know, a, a um, long distance relationship with your estranged husband um, or, or your husband living in the foreign states and you living here with your kids as a wife is much better than completely staying single because if you're single then every every motherfucker on the planet is uh, trying to screw you you know it's it's all fucked up um, and, and that, that's be much better you know with one of Austria's weaker neighbors and then Austria would intervene and then we're back in a great power conflict situation Huh. A loose confederation, on the other hand, hmm. might be enough to deter meddling from outside powers. Yes, but I bet they stick with independence, I feel like. I think people are so stupid and the liberals are, are going to be adamant. They want in independence, you know, and, and it's going to be all independence, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> if there was to be a German confederation, hmm. Metternich would first need to mend the relationship with Hardenberg. Hmm. The Prussian duplicity over Saxony had left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. But if the two great hmm. powers were to live under the same umbrella, they would hmm. have to be friends. Metternich began making his pitch to some of the smaller German states. He hmm. found very little resistance. Many felt burned over the Saxony debacle and sought hmm. a closer strategic relationship with Austria for their own protection. Wow. Crazy. I know. Metternich's vision for a German confederation would look like this. Hmm. All states within the confederation would maintain their independence, except when it came to matters of military defense. Oh. Under the German confederation, an attack on one would be an attack on all. Any oh. outside power sticking their nose into German affairs would be hmm. met with the combined strength of every German state. Okay. This ruffled some feathers because oh. it restricted the ability of German states to make alliances with outside powers. Oh. Bavaria in particular <laughs> was upset by this. But Metternich mm. soothed things over by pointing out that this would put them in a military alliance with mm. 38 other German states. Such okay. a thing had not been possible under the Holy Roman Empire. And okay. such a thing would not be possible to anybody out there negotiating on their own. Hmm. Of course, Austria and Prussia were to be exempt from this. They oh. had their own goofy reasoning. They had non-German provinces within their respective empires. Hmm. Whatever. The real reason is that they were great powers and huh. reserved the right to make alliances or war as they wished. Hmm. Okay. Austria and Prussia would be the two anchors of the German Confederation. And it was paramount to the survival of the confederation that the okay. two great powers within it got along. The yeah. German confederation would have a... But I feel like they're never going to get along. I don't know. <laughs> central diet. <laughs> it's a all a mess. Located in the free city of Frankfurt. Hmm. The diet was conceived as a sort of United Nations of Germany, where oh. various independent German states would come together and resolve any disputes that might lead to war. They would also work to reduce barriers so that Germans could live and work and write in any German-speaking country without fear. To this mm. end, they created a weak federal legal system to protect certain political rights across borders. Man, Hardenberg okay. of Prussia was surprisingly supportive of this proposal. Okay. The German Diet treated Austria and Prussia as equal partners, okay. which was reassuring to an insecure and young power such as Prussia. Huh. Now we, we're on to Italy now. Holy shit, they at least agreed to something, okay? And I hope they maintain that that equal behavior. I, I hope they did because holy shit, man, we don't want another war, okay? Italy, um, let's see what, what's up with that. <laughs> Damn. Shit. 
It, this whole video is like trying so hard to maintain peace. Everybody's trying so hard to maintain peace or everybody's trying so hard to maintain like like engage in war over things. But eventually it came down to peace. How peace was settled is the uh, conclusion. But I, I bet it's by the end of this video, everybody, everything is just peaceful, okay? Dang. There were other areas that could not be fully restored under the 1792 borders. Italy had been totally reshaped under French rule, and the Congress of Vienna needed to decide how much French influence was acceptable in the region going huh. forward. At okay. the moment of his defeat, Napoleon had been king of Italy, hmm. really northern Italy, and his huh. son had been king of Rome, also huh. northern Italy, and one okay. of his top generals had been the king of Naples, southern hmm. Italy. Yeah. Obviously this arrangement couldn't continue, but it was not immediately clear what the Congress should do. Hmm. Metternich and the Austrian Emperor took a particular interest in this. Huh. They considered Northern Italy Austria's backyard, and Metternich believed that if Austria and France were in constant competition for influence in Northern Italy, it would hmm. eventually end in another war. Whatever wow. the new political settlement in Northern Italy looked like, it had hmm. to be able to resist French influence going forward. Okay. Metternich Fuck. spoke to Castlereagh about this, and the two found that they were of the same mind. Castlereagh mm. told him that Britain was not overly concerned about the future of Northern Italy, so huh. long as it remained out of reach for the French. The two okay. men came to an agreement. Remembering mm. the Poland-Saxony crisis, Castlereagh yeah. said that the British public was in an anti-imperialist mood right now, and so he couldn't oh. appear to support any sweeping annexations of territory. Okay. However, Britain had no problem with Austrian hegemony in the region. If huh. Metternich could draw up a plan that only made minor territorial adjustments, mm. wink wink, he could count oh. on Castlereagh's support. Oh. Once it became clear <laughs> to all parties that mm. the future of Italy was being discussed, there were huh. calls to replicate the success of the German committee by forming an Italian committee. Huh. Metternich and Castlereagh shut this talk down immediately. Hmm. Per their agreement, the future of Italy would be decided by Metternich alone. Oh, dang! <laughs> All right, I hope, I hope he decided for the best, you know. Is what he came up with. Okay. Austria would conduct a minor territorial adjustment by directly annexing Lombardy and Venice. Hmm. This would add millions of Italians to the Austrian Empire. Metternich hmm. knew that the Hungarians would have opposed any deal that added oh. more ethnic Germans to the empire, since yeah. it would have upset the delicate balance within Austria. Expanding oh. into northern Italy was seen as politically neutral, so oh. Metternich used this opportunity to beef up Austria by annexing one of the richest parts of Europe. Castlereagh oh. noticed this, but deemed it minor enough to escape the notice of the British public. Oh, okay. Dang. Next, Metternich recreated the Duchy of Parma and handed it over to Mary Louise of Austria, the Austrian Emperor's eldest daughter. Okay. The fact that cool. she remained the wife of Napoleon was a bit inconvenient, huh. so Metternich carved out a rule so that the duchy would go to some nephew of the Spanish king upon her death. Hmm. Spain had been upset when Metternich got the authority to reshape northern Italy, and this was huh. Metternich's way of throwing them a bone. Huh. The okay. Grand Duchy of Tuscany was also recreated and handed over to the brother of the Austrian Emperor. Similarly, the Duchy of Modena was recreated and hmm. handed to some cousin of the Austrian Emperor. Noticing okay. a pattern yet? By doing this, Metternich technically met Castlereagh's requirement to not openly annex all of northern Italy, but it was a right. bit deceptive. Huh. In some cases, the prime ministers of these new states would be Austrian officials hand-picked by Metternich. Okay. On paper, these were all independent countries. But in huh. reality, the Austrians were treating northern Italy like a colony. Okay. In addition to wow. all this, Metternich reformed the Papal States, which hmm. was an important sticking point to the majority Catholic Austrian Empire. All right, okay. He also strengthened and restored the kingdom of Piedmont, Sardinia. As an independent okay. and fairly strong regional power, they would serve Dang. as a buffer against any future French expansion. 
Damn, man, that's so deep. This shit is so deep. I, I thought this video was going to be uh, fine. Like, uh, not, I, I even said it in the beginning. It was kind of entertaining. But it's going even deeper. It's in the second half of this video, at least. Um, but fine, I like it. I like it, you know. I, I have to think, though. If I don't talk that much, please understand that I'm thinking about it, okay? I'm, I'm paying attention, focusing on it, okay? I'm sorry, okay? But let's go. Finally, hmm. Napoleon's former general was eventually removed from southern Italy, and a distant relation of the King of Spain returned hmm. to rule the region once more. Hmm. I should briefly okay. talk about how Napoleon's general was removed from southern Italy. It involves huh. an event known to history as the Hundred Days. Huh. Now we're on to the Hundred Days! Oh my god! It's so deep! Holy shit! I'm like, wow! <laughs> shit! Dang. I hope everything turned out for the better, though, you know? Just saying. Like, Here's wow. a brief summary of what happened. When the Congress of Vienna was like six months into negotiations, hmm. Napoleon secretly slipped away from his confinement on the island of Elba and oh. landed in southern France. He marched yeah. north. They they wanted him back, so he was called called to like called called and um, you know, helped fight against you know, help fight for them and everything. So he was like loved, beloved by so many people and his values and personality and all that. And that's why they, uh, you know, basically uh, called him up to their, to the, the French, okay? Wow. With maybe a thousand supporters. But as he advanced, thousands huh. more flocked to his banner. Three weeks after landing in France, he okay. captured Paris without firing a shot. Hmm. The Allies had long feared something like this. And in oh. fact, during the last six months of negotiations, the huh. great powers had kept their armies mobilized for this very reason. Oh, Within they were prepared! Holy shit! Hours of Napoleon's disappearance from Elba, hundreds of thousands of soldiers were marching on France. Oh my god! Three months after Napoleon captured Paris, British and Prussian armies faced the French outside the town of Waterloo in the Netherlands, current day Belgium. Oh man! At Waterloo, Napoleon was soundly defeated yeah. by the British general Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of yeah. Wellington. Yeah, Wellington and, you know, the, the blucher, the pussy. God damn it! Napoleon fled, and about a month later, he surrendered to the British, who promptly sent him to the island of St. Helena in the mm. South Atlantic. Where completely isolated from all the rest of the planet Earth in the middle of the ocean. Holy shit. Under the watchful I can't believe there's a, a, a you know location like St. Helena Island where it's like one dot in the middle of a vast ocean. Holy shit. That, that ocean can also create like, I don't know, tsunami and can easily eat up the whole island. You know what I mean? It's like so isolated and looks so small. It looked like... You know, it could have been like anything could have just, and, and the 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 tide of the ri the the water probably could have fucking the ocean could have like probably eaten up if there's like storms and shit. You know, it, it's weird. They, the they it's almost like they sentenced him to death or something by by you know isolating him in that island. Wow. Out of the British, he would spend the rest of his days. Man, literally imprisoned. In a small space of freedom. That's it. Fuck. <laughs> I've been strategically talking around the 100 days for this entire video. Because mm. while it's certainly militarily interesting, and Napoleonically interesting, mm. it's not diplomatically interesting. Huh. From the perspective of the Congress of Vienna, the 100 days were a brief pause in negotiations, after which huh. everyone just picked back up where they left off. Also, and this may annoy some people, but it must be said, the Hundred Days were not a particularly close call. Huh. When Napoleon captured Paris, he had maybe 50,000 soldiers at his disposal. Hmm. The Allies had a million. Oh, Naturally, fuck! Napoleon immediately began raising 100,000 additional soldiers. But oh, so did okay. the Allies, and by oh. this point, the Allies were faster. Oh if my Napoleon god! Napoleon had won at Waterloo, there would have been another Waterloo later that summer. If he had won 10 Waterloos, the Allies still would have had him outnumbered. Yeah, he, oh, it's meant to fail. He shouldn't have come back if you uh, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a, I feel so bad for Napoleon, bro. The entire hundred days was an act of delusion. 
and there was never a serious threat of a French victory. Yeah. Anyways, I bring all that up. It's like, hey, that, that, that rat is back in that small den or small hole. Um, we'll fight him later, but, but it's also like concerning it, it, because it's Napoleon. He might win all the wars. Everybody was afraid of him. So they still were trying to get, you know, try to defeat him and shit and getting their troops together, you know, to go and defeat him in Waterloo. And they did defeat him. And even though Napoleon is like, I mean, they were afraid of Napoleon. That should, that, that's proof right there. Holy shit. <laughs> because Napoleon's former general, the King of mm. Naples, sided with Napoleon during the crisis, which huh. gave Metternich a good excuse to remove him from power and have him executed. Oh, whoa. I, was he executed? Holy shit, man, the slave trade. Now we're into the slave trade. The Western people are all up in this shit. Even now they're like slave, slavery, slavery. Oh my God, fuck y'all. <laughs> Jeez. The slave trade. I bet they know everything about <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. Framework for the so final agreement. So here was the framework for hmm. the final settlement. Broadly speaking, Europe would return to its 1792 borders. Hmm. Russia would swallow up Poland under a strict constitutional arrangement, and Prussia would annex half of Saxony. Hmm. The Holy Roman Empire would be replaced with the much more practical German Confederation. Northern oh. Italy would become an anti-French zone under Austrian supervision. With negotiations okay. drawing to a close, there was one lingering issue that had hmm. not yet been addressed. The British Prime Minister Liverpool instructed Castlereagh to begin discussing slavery. Okay. By 1815, Shit. the British anti-slavery political movement had truly become a force to be reckoned with. Oh, In 1788, man. a bunch of local abolitionist groups sent Parliament 60,000 signatures calling for the abolition of slavery. Huh. In 1815, these same groups gathered almost a million signatures. Wow. But this time, they didn't send them to Parliament. They sent them to Castlereagh in Vienna. Whoa. One statistic that was not lost on anybody was that the number of signatures sent to Castlereagh was greater <laughs> than the total number of votes in the last election. Whoa. This was not simply an act of protest. It was a shot across the bow. Wow. By this time, every British city and most British towns had mm. an abolitionist group that was active in local politics. Oh, it was not shit. uncommon for the average British voter to hear about the ongoing sin of slavery on a weekly mm. basis in their church and in their newspaper. The huh. issue became impossible to avoid. After mm. one particularly incendiary pamphlet went viral, more than huh. 300,000 women pledged to boycott sugar since it was exclusively produced with oh. slave labor. Oh People my God! Were hungry for action, <laughs> and when the government okay. showed no interest in doing anything, they grabbed at whatever consumer choices might make a difference. Okay, political cool. activism. I mean, I understand the uh, sugar. I mean, I get it. it, it if it's like the, the the slavery is so hard, um, and and they're uh, help producing a lot of things, the slaves and everything. So, um, avoiding, uh, you know, not wanting something and banning sugar and all that kind of makes sense. That's cool. I, I would say it's a little bit like, okay, that's only sugar. Why are you? But I can understand their position. It's like everybody was yelling on top of their heart, like lungs, um, trying to um, abolish, you know, slavery and whatnot. Vism against slavery was so popular in some circles that it became fashionable, literally. Mm. This medallion, oh. called the Wedgwood Medallion, was mm. mass-produced in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Huh. Men generally wore them around their necks, and women around their wrists or pinned into their hair. The uh, what does that say? I'm not a man and a uh, brother. What the fuck? Am I not a man and a brother? Oh, cool. That's why we got brothers now. <laughs> and All women right. around their wrists or pinned. Got a bunch of black, a lot of black brothers, okay. Into their hair. <laughs> the inscription reads, am I not a man and a brother? Hmm. <laughs> this image of a man kneeling in chains became the most widely distributed piece of art depicting a black man ever. And the unofficial hmm. logo of the anti-slavery movement. Huh. In 1807, at the end. It's almost like people are bound to becoming you know like you know watching for freedom and whatnot and and more it's almost like 
human beings become soft as they go along you know uh, they they become nice more accepting more uh, you know i don't know where this leads to will this lead to good be good times uh, better times or is it going to lead back to fucking terrible times i don't know man um i hope it leads to good times we 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 all 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 of us humans from across the planet want good good things to happen okay everybody is accepting and nice and you know you know everybody to to a certain extent they want things to be good okay they're not afraid of everything they they they're like they are they're, they're worried about some things so i hope things don't you know make things again like like really difficult for us that's that's all that matters other than that everything is fine and and you know just just maintain the independence that you got don't you know just don't uh make things terrible it, it, what no matter what you are okay that's all that matters the end of a really political fight that lasted more than 15 years britain passed an act that abolished the british slave trade Hmm. It did not abolish the act of slavery, but it made it illegal to transport enslaved persons across the Atlantic to the hmm. colonies. Advocates believed that without new bodies coming over from Africa, chattel slavery in the colonies would mostly die out within one or two generations. Hmm. They were wrong, but it was nevertheless a big deal that Britain finally acknowledged that their goal was to eventually abolish slavery. Okay. The abolitionists were correctly not satisfied by this half measure. They oh. demanded nothing less than the complete and total abolition of slavery. And as the okay. years went on, their influence only continued to grow. Okay, you you're fighting for the abolition of slavery, which is fantastic. Good for you. But what about the new minority you got? You know? Okay, they're going to be a minority. They're going to respect all great, okay? Fantastic. But how long is that going to last that respect that that understanding that love that affection that that you know you know all, all between the two races how long is it going to last i feel like it's going some day it's going to flip you know some day some day it's going to be crazy you know uh, i i don't know man but you know i hope things get better you know i want this relationship to be good you know it's it's not like Oh shit, shit will uh, this this is going to be really bad. Let's um you know put them back in chains. No, none of that, okay? Calm down. None of that, okay? We just want peace. We just want good. Um but but now it's like the black lives matter and all of that shit is just and now the uh, the leader of the black lives matter purchased a bunch of mansions and what not and and so many people died in the process nobody talks about it though it's all fucked up it's all fucked up okay so this is why once you're done with slavery deport all the slaves that's what i would have done but but then again i would be called racist and the slave uh, anti slave movement will be like lynching me on the fucking you know uh, because oh shit you're anti you you you're against slaves why you want to deport them and all of that shit you know what i mean it's going to be a fucking me mess okay but i hope the relations the race relations are going to be good in the future you know but i feel like something really terrible can happen and then they will call you racist for every single thing it's almost like you you got too too big of a mouth man stop calling everybody racist okay you please you will you it's, it's almost like you're asking to be put in chains you know it that's how bad it has become but whatever it's just ridiculous wow keep the race relations calm and good apparently the race relations were completely ruined by barack obama back in the day when he said oh this you know we're still slaves we're not happy or whatever is what he said i don't know man um it, the political climate is all fucked up that's what i could say bro mm. Shit. Lord Liverpool inherited this political situation when he hmm. became prime minister, and he wasn't happy about it. He was holding on to his conservative Whig majority in parliament by the barest of threats. And now the abolitionists had sent a million signatures to his foreign secretary in Vienna. Hmm. Liverpool didn't really care one way or the other about slavery, but if he didn't give these people something, they might topple his government. He instructed mm. Castle. Uh, and 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 uh, one thing I want to say is that we as Indians, I'm an Indian, right? As Indians, we parted away 
the Pakistanis and ourselves from the Pakistanis, and we separated both the both both the races, you know, both the nation in two different nations, and that's we did that because we couldn't stand each other, and and for the best, you know. So probably what will happen with the blacks and the uh, the Caucasians, that's what will happen in the future, probably because you know she will hit the fan. But then again, it's all it's almost like some of the uh, the whites, some of the whites are also taking advantage of this outrage between between the uh, blacks and the whites it's like what the fuck man and the blacks are also you know fucking um earning money uh, corruption and all of that it's happening man it's it's weird you know uh, i you should have you should have seen this coming long time ago the two party system and the uh, the blacks and whites coexisting you should have doubted a a a, a problematic situation would have come in the future you should have fucking saw this coming and you should have right as as soon as the slave trade was done you should have done something to avoid this problem you know you should have given black their own nations um, blacks their own uh, territory like poland did you know it's it's like that it, it could, you could have given them their own uh, plot to, like land to live in or you should have deported them or something it, it's could have, i could say the same about i'm saying the same about the white people the blacks would have said hey we we want our own nation okay we want our own land um we don't want whites we don't want to coexist they should have said that too like but then white people are, are divided on their own they want to you know use blacks and and at the same time they want to leave them alone and be independent what the fuck it's all fucked up man holy shit and, and i might come off as racist and whatnot but i'm just saying back then in this point of stage when you abolish slavery you better fucking fix have a solution to it you know it's just just uh, just just abolishing is not going to be enough you see just you should have thought more like seriously you know proudly wearing that chain with that am i a, am i not a brother thing you know it, it's just not enough do you have any solution for that like come on you know just not just abolishing is not enough that's what I'm saying. Ray to try to get some anti-slavery commitments into the final agreement at Vienna. Hmm. And abolishing slavery also had its own consequences, but nobody paid attention, I guess. I don't know. Or, or maybe that was all the plan. You know what I mean? A, a plan from the beginning by some crazy people. I don't know, man. It, and it, it just um, spread like a wildfire. Like how BLM was, everybody was like Black Lives Matter back in like, what, 2020, you know? It, it was like that. Holy shit. I guess it was like that, like Black Lives Matter. <laughs> but abolishing slavery thing. Castle right. approach. I mean, I, I I am for abolishing slavery, but you know, do you know what happens after? Do, are you ready to tackle the problems? Not not like be racist or anything. Just for the good of the whole, all of Europe and everybody, you know. The eight know. member Central Committee, that is the five great powers plus Spain, Portugal, and Sweden, and ask them to include a provision in the final agreement that committed everybody to the eventual abolition of the slave trade. Huh. Okay. Of those present, only Britain and Sweden had abolished the slave trade. Castlereagh's opening position was that everybody else should adopt Britain's anti-slavery laws. Hmm. Another way of saying that is that Castlereagh was not committing Britain to any further anti-slavery reforms. Yeah, and and then and then and then like black people are like so much about slavery and oppression and and you know like you know racist. They keep saying racist. It just ridiculous the the fucking slavery bullshit started from your own race in in africa okay what the fuck man like what why are you so obsessed with race why like what nobody wants this fucking annoying problem of yours with race everybody wants peace but you over here it, fucking complaining bitching all the time making your whole personality about race and uh, Look at, I mean, I'm an Indian, right? We're we're separated from Pakistanis, and we live we live happily, okay? We're 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 fine. We're not obsessing over. Oh my God, Pakistanis are invading. Even though there's a little bit of that here and there, but you know, and like secularism and all of that. But you know, we're just doing fine, bro. 
Like, but but in in Western society, it's not like that. There's always idiots fighting, always, and, and they keep bringing up race and shit. You idiots! I'm just oh my god, and then they'll call me racist if I say too much. Fuck it, you know. This fact was not lost on Castle Ray's negotiating partners. Spain, Portugal, and France threw a fit. Hmm. France is an interesting case because they had heroically abolished slavery at the beginning of their revolution. And then huh. under Napoleon, they shamefully brought it back. Spain. Yeah, Napoleon is like the old structure and um, going back to the old days or something. And they, they had to bring it back, I guess, you know. It, it, but but uh, what Napoleon stood for and what his values were would have, would have applied and would have actually uh, freed slaves again, probably, you know. In Portugal were the other two powers most heavily enmeshed with the slave trade. Spain, Portugal, and France argued that Britain only wanted to abolish the slave trade because they oh. had a head start out in the colonies. Oh. They also argued that an agreement like this would give the British Navy an excuse to stop and inspect every ship in the Atlantic. In oh. other words, this would all be to Britain's advantage. Hmm. Castlereagh tried to respond by appealing to morality, but this only hmm. incensed them even further. One Spain... Yeah, but Again, morality is great, but I also like if you think about it, um, situation, real life is different from morality, and we all know that. And you know, I'm not saying you know he's wrong or anything. He's all he's right, but situation can also be fucked up, you know. Spanish diplomat got in Castle Ray's face and told him the English have always been good at making business march alongside honor. Oh. Jokes on him. Castle Ray was Irish. I'm Irish. <laughs> okay, cool. Joe Biden. <laughs> okay, cool. If we think about this for a moment, huh. Castlereagh could have shown Britain's commitment to the cause by talking huh. about complete and total abolition, which huh. would have hurt Britain more than anyone. Huh. If he had walked into the room talking about abolition, he would have had some credibility because he would have been saying, let's all do something difficult together. Okay. But Castle Ray didn't bring up total abolition because he was an imperialist and he wasn't that personally bothered by slavery. Dang! <laughs> After some agonizing negotiations, hmm. they agreed to attach a document to the final treaty. Is it the rise of Christianity that, make the, that made the abolishing slavery so hardcore, passionate thing ever? Like, probably the Christianity, you know? But then again, if you think about it, it's, it's the Christianity that's making all the problems. If you think about it, the, the idea of um, morality, sin, and everything is, is making things you know, go one way, good, and not bad. And there's no gray point either. It has to be good. It's this almost like a Puritanism thing. But in in the case of slavery, they did, it, it, it contributed to some good. That's good. But what, what about the consequences that comes later? I don't know. <laughs> treaty coming out of Vienna called a declaration of intent to abolish the slave trade. Hmm. At Spain and Portugal's insistence, this declaration would be non-binding, which huh. sucks. Castlereagh was like, if it's non-binding, we're going to need to show people some specific... I, I feel like Christianity is the first biggest brainwash ever. Like, I mean, I'm not saying God or Jesus or anybody is bad or the, uh, the values of Christianity are bad or anything. They're all great, but it... it moves people into a certain direction completely making them blind to other things you know what i mean it's like i mean slave trade is uh, abolishing it is, is good fantastic great amazing but then there's like other things that you need to deal with what about the future do you, do you know what will happen you know it's it's all so many things coming together and you need to like you you need to have a mind of an engineer or a you know, like an architect to make things better for the future and the current generation. You know what I mean? And, you know, they, they probably didn't think about it. It's people, what that's what people want is what they said. And, uh, you know, rise of Christianity is super popular or something. And then, you know, they, they, they just, be, they just uh, you know, do whatever they fucking want and they just vote it on it or something and end of story. Like, specific <laughs> goals, at least. Hmm. France agreed to abolish the slave trade within five years. 
they would blow right past that deadline. Spain mm. agreed to abolish the slave trade within eight years eight with years. some pretty large loopholes. They would blow right past that deadline. Hmm. Portugal would only agree to abolish the slave trade north of the equator. And since they didn't really have any colonies north of the equator, this was pretty much a giant middle finger to the rest of the Congress. Oh, dang. Castlereagh also got all of the participants to declare their intention to eradicate slavery once and for all. But they provided absolutely no specifics and no Hmm. deadlines. A meaningless statement huh. meant to simply soothe public opinion. <laughs> okay. Someday, In maybe. In the end, Britain's attempt to inject anti-slavery commitments into the Congress was a failure. Hmm. The reason it was... But eventually, they were all going to become like, okay, uh, pe- that's what people want. It's going to be inevitable. It's going to be, uh, you know, all this pain of being a slave is going to go away at some point. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to. They should have seen that shit coming. Do they not know philosophy? Do they not know real life? Do they not know how, how life works? Like, holy shit, before you accepted slaves, you should have seen this shit coming whoa but now we got this blm and all this shit now because you you were okay with slave and now you abolished and now they're with you and now it's a big ass uh, fight between both the races holy shit was a failure <laughs> is that castlereagh didn't even really try he was half-hearted from the start and his reluctance to come in there with any radical proposals was a signal to the other great powers that britain wasn't really taking this seriously whoa it's a shame because this was a moment when something big could have been accomplished. Okay. Britain had serious leverage and serious public support, and Castlereagh didn't use any of it. Hmm. One of the consequences of Castlereagh's lack of enthusiasm in hmm. 1815 was that slavery continued in places like Cuba and Brazil until the late 1880s. Hmm. That's a lot of lives and a lot of years, and it's a real stain on Castlereagh's record that he didn't really try to do anything about it. Hmm. But from a purely political standpoint, the anti-slavery negotiations worked. Yeah. Prime Minister Liverpool now had something to show the discontents back home. And for now, that was enough. Shit! So that was slavery period. It's all fucked up. And it resulted in the current climate where everybody's fighting. You know, I don't know. There, there probably is going to be another war or something. And the whites are all divided on their own. It's, it's so fucking ridiculous so stupid i'm sorry but holy shit why are you whites not sticking together you know you <laughs> whoa why are you on un- uh, divided and you know it's all fucked up man holy shit man you you are the the you you're gonna be the cause of your own downfall i feel like you know because of all this it's a mess what you what what the uh, race relations are fucking lost and the uh, over acceptance of immigration is like Dude, are you, are you, do you like, like, a, a soft invasion? Do you like this shit? It's weird, man. I don't know, man. You gotta be careful, you know? It, it, you know, different cultures. It's not the color, it's not avoiding the color of each other's race. It's, it's never about that. It's about different cultures, okay? Different cultures, different religions. This shit will fucking hit you in the balls soon, Okay? You, you, you're not paying attention to what's happening. Be careful, goddammit. Fuck. As soon as you accepted slaves, it started. Fuck. <laughs> Whatever, you know. The tree- I, I think everybody wants peace in the end, so it's gonna end in a peaceful result. And so, no worry about that. No probably will be a peaceful uh, understanding in the future it's not going to be it's good there's going to be a bit of civil war and shit like that there's going to be a lot of deaths but it's going to come down to peace at some point you know treaty of vienna was Hmm. finalized in june of 1815 Hmm. all of the great powers signed off on it the only Hmm. outlier was spain who remained upset over metternich's heavy-handed treatment of northern italy spain refused to sign the final document which Hmm. was unfortunate. But so long as all the great powers were on board, this was deemed acceptable. Okay. The final treaty was mostly built upon realist principles and created a balance of power with clearly defined spheres of influence that would Hmm. hopefully prevent future great power conflicts. Okay. After Vienna, 
it was widely understood and accepted that if anybody invaded one of those tiny German states, it would automatically mean war with Prussia and Austria. If anybody mm. invaded Northern Italy, it would automatically mean war with Austria. If anybody invaded the Netherlands, it would automatically mean war with Britain. If anybody mm. invaded Poland, it would automatically mean war with Russia. Wow, <laughs> everybody's is, stuck and nobody know what to do. <laughs> that so long as governments understood what was and wasn't off limits, mm. minor disagreements could be solved diplomatically and great power conflicts on the scale of the French Revolutionary Whoa. and Napoleonic Wars yeah. could be entirely avoided. Yeah, but the fucking race relations and the fucking uh, ridiculous uh, import of immigrants, legal or, Ill or illegal, it's like, holy shit. And the illegal is skyrocketing recently. Oh, my God, man. And, um, you know, it, it just tell, it just as an outsider, I see, like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? They're, they're, they're accepting immigration like it's nothing. They think everybody is American or some shit. The whole world is not American. They will all be like, you know, they will, Im they will fucking immigrate into America. And then they'll do their own thing, which is... Uh, their own culture, their own religion, they're going to follow that. They're going to talk in their own language. They're never going to talk in, uh, you know, English language or anything. It's going to be a fucking mess, bro. It's weird, you know, and it's I, I got to blame Christianity for that fault. It, it's the biggest brainwash, the first most biggest, the first brainwash ever. OK, it will it, it makes it, it forces people to want to accept and be loving and kind. But real life is not like that, okay? It's gonna backfire so hard, and then I could see that Christianity will be taken down, and they're gonna start a new religion in the future or something. Something's gonna happen because this acceptance shit, it will probably hit, shit will hit the fan so hard in the future. And nobody seems, everybody's like so hardcore one-sided and it, it's not gonna work man holy shit you're either pro-immigration because uh you're you're christian or pro-immigration because you're 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 crazy or or, or non-immigration that is because you're racist or whatever but nobody it's like holy shit man it's like everybody's fucked up Wow, nobody is in the in the middle anymore nobody sees nobody thinks like common sense no no other nation likes this okay but only the americans like it because they're all fucked up either religion or modern day uh, beliefs or, or it's just it's fucking all kinds of beliefs contributing to brainwashing holy shit and it's all started from christianity in my opinion fuck and, and you know I, I i love christianity and their values but it's not realistic it will backfire soon you know Fuck. It was in the internet. That's my mini rant. I'm sorry. And uh, you, I might sound like racist, but I'm just cautioning you. Be careful. God damn it. Everybody's good in the world. Blacks, oh, Asians, everybody. Everybody's good. But they're of different cultures, different behaviors. They will fight. Be careful. Interest of all great powers to respect these limitations. And mm. if any great power was found to be acting recklessly or mm. belligerently, it was in the interest of everybody else mm. to put them in their place. Whoa! <laughs> After 25 years of chaos and war, the great powers were having a go at stability. Wow. This international system that emerged from Vienna is mm. sometimes called the Concert of Europe, as in Shit. all of Europe acting in concert or in unison. Mm. The next 15 years would put a severe test upon the concert system, and we will see in time whether these frenzied and far-reaching negotiations were worth it. Hmm. Okay, wow! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so that was the whole series, two-part series, the Congress of Vienna, part two, 1814 to 1815. Started off with um, some crazy shit, <laughs> just talking about um, the uh, aftermath of all the, uh, the trying to uh, pissed off leaders. That's what it started with, and then then uh, trying negotiating and all that crazy with the um, you know it's just Alexander and. It, it's just ridiculous and then um, you know we got some some uh, negotiations some peaceful treaties we went to Italy we, we talked about that we talked about the f all kinds of stuff. So we talked about uh, the Prussian the, the Poland stuff everything and then we talked about um, we, we, we heard about the what do you call it the slave trade and then the uh, agreement of, of like the understanding that every single thing is tied to a consequence and I hope the uh, balance is maintained or else if anybody is reckless then we'll put them in their place that's exactly what um, how it ended with okay but uh, crazy crazy uh, result um, that's the reality okay it's it's um, it's it's complicated I don't know how we it's a because we became we became we, we, we love uh, we want everything. We want to be peaceful. We want to be nice, and we don't want any more wars anymore. And with Napoleon, it all ended. And Napoleon was like from Napoleon is from like from like a bygone era of you know war, invasion, capture, and all of that. It, it was over with Napoleon. And I don't blame Napoleon for being all you know, you know. But uh, you know it, the the age it changed, and Napoleon uh, was kicked away. And it was ended. All of it was ended. Okay, but the um, the, the and, and in the end, we we talked about the uh, the slavery and all of that. I gotta say, man, as an outsider, I, I I gotta warn you guys. You know, all this immigration, fucking. Uh, okay, you got a minority in your nation. Great, minority and majority. Fine, let it be like that. Don't fucking uh, mess with it, you know. Now immigration is so hard. So everybody's fucking immigrating. People from in India are going there. Indians are like the topmost migrants in the Western society, which is just fucking ridiculous, you know. It's like everybody's trying to grab the money, you know. They're not. They're not there going to America because they want to become American or they're refugees. Uh, we're in a World War Three and everybody's escaping. No, no. <laughs> They're only going to America because they want to get the money, get the cash and come back and live here. Or they'll just settle there because the your, I'm sorry to say this, but, you know, your nation is the most beautiful nation ever. You got the most beautiful landscapes. You got the most beautiful, like, Grand Canyon and all of that. It's the greatest shit ever, the, the, the most beautiful. You happen to live in the most beautiful part in the world. You stupid motherfucker. You're living in the most beautiful part of the world. And you don't think people from across the world are going to immigrate into your nation. And this is going to become a big ass issue. And you're not seeing the problems of all this. And, and, and the rising uh, black hatred against the anti-white anti stuff. And, uh, you know, it's like, holy shit. <laughs> Anybody gets crucified for saying anything that remotely sounds racist and it's a holy shit man the the minority is so hard so protected so much it's like they should be protected but like so much protected that you can't even raise a voice against them holy shit it's like a gang it's like a big ass uh, you know deadly gang or something it's a holy shit but um, that's that's the um, I don't know it probably shit has to get bad before it gets better and it will get bad and people will people have to learn from their mistakes in order to progress forward that's the only way anybody will learn they nobody has the intelligence to avert and and you know get rid of all the problems and remain peaceful nobody has the intelligence to do that it's all uh, fucking uh, animal animal behavior and you're gonna end up having problems and then you're gonna engage in problems and and you're gonna have you know, massive civil wars, all kinds of shit, and then you will have, you will be stuck, and you're gonna have to, uh, you know, separate yourself from the immigrants and yourselves. It's all, it's all, it's all gonna be a mess, okay? But that's the fucking <laughs> reality. Whatever, okay? 
um, you know, if not now, then later. If not later, then someday in the future. You know, it's all a mess. Okay, the Congress of Vienna, Part Two, 1814 to 1815. What did you think about this reaction? I hope I didn't uh, offend you in any political way or manner. You know, I'm just I'm an outside guy. I'm some retard from India looking at all of this, and it all looks like some it all looks like some fucked up shit. Okay, and I'm like just some of the problems I see. I just want to talk about it, you know, and then uh, please don't like, oh, you're racist or you're fucking sexist, misogynist, racist. Oh, please don't do that. OK, <laughs> please make sure to uh, subscribe if you like this reaction, though. And um, if, if you don't know already, uh, the fucking power went off in the middle of the reaction. Luckily, my video was is recording in like MKV format. So um, I'm able to recover that shit. If not, then fuck, we're all done. You know, but uh, this part two of Congress of Vienna, this series is done. We're going to move on to Epic History TV's World War One. OK, uh, or, or should I do something else after that? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, please suggest me what to do after this. I, I, I'm going straight to World War One in Epic History TV channel. Um, if not, then uh, what, what else should I do? Please suggest me in the uh, comment section and I will uh, see you guys later. Please subscribe to both my channels. Go check out my backup channel. I got a copyright strike or there. It's just YouTube. It's just it's it's like it's like, oh, it's like a traditional thing. That festival that you're waiting for a whole year. It, it has come. Fuck. <laughs> and, you know. It, the copyright strike, whatever. So please check out the other Napoleonic Wars, uh, the Marshall series, half of Italian Napoleon in Italy series is over there. Go check it out. I got a lot of views there. I wish YouTube didn't strike me. I would have continued all of this shit over there, but now I'm now now I'm in my main channel doing all this. So please subscribe to both my channels. Show me support. Don't miss out on my content and also like suggest me more videos. I'll note it down and react to it. And um, yeah, that's it for this reaction. Please subscribe to both my channels and I'll see you guys there. If you're watching this, you're probably watching this by the end of this weekend. And, you know, you're going to have a lot to watch. Um, uploading a lot of videos and also like a live stream. I got to start uploading over here. Um, and I hope I don't get any copyright strike for that. Okay, so please subscribe to both my channels and I'll see you guys later in the next series, in, a, in another series. This series is over. Okay, and I hope you're satisfied with this reaction. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>